Hello beautiful souls, I hope you guys are doing super well today. As you can hear in my voice, I am still a little bit sick from my London trip. I'm basically recovered, I've just been left with a nasty cough, which is touch wood has more or less dissipated today so i'm happy about that but i am still a little bit raspy also apologies for the lighting situation today my halo light broke just as i was about to record it tipped over and then it stopped working <laughs> so just an excuse to buy the box lights that I've wanted for a really long time, I suppose. I've been promising a haul video for um, the various bits and pieces that I picked up in London. If you haven't seen the London vlogs yet, then I will link them right here. You can see them just here. What a fun, amazing trip that was. It was only, what, three nights and four days, but I had so much fun. Nero also said that he had a lot of fun. I haven't been to London in years. The last time I went to Camden was probably when I was about, I think I said this in the vlog, I think I was a teenager. I wanted to talk a little bit about the difference because Camden has changed a lot. I mean you expect places to change right when you haven't been there for over a decade. But boy, has it changed. When I went to Camden, I didn't actually realise that it just so happened to be World Goth Day. I didn't realise until a couple of days later once I'd gotten home. And I was like, wait a second. It was World Goth Day a couple of days ago. That was the day I was in Camden. What a perfect time to be in Camden, right? But weirdly, the only goths I actually saw there were the employees uh, in Sai Sai. I saw a couple of punks, but that was it. Uh, Camden was basically full of normies. Even most of the traders in the stables and in Camden Market were kind of normies. I, I mean, I don't mean any harm, but when I was a teenager, and I mean, we're, we're talking like the early 2000s, full of goths, full of punks, full of alt people, right? I actually felt at home when I went to Camden in the before time. I felt at home there because I've always kind of dressed and styled myself in this way. Everywhere I go, I've always been the unique person, right? So going to Camden was really refreshing because finally, I was surrounded by people who all looked like me. They're all inked, pierced, dread, brightly coloured hair, styled in a very alt way, whatever kind of genre that might be. And this was the first time that I went to Camden and I did not feel that way. I felt the same way in Camden as I feel everywhere else. And I also noticed that I was being stared at more in Camden than I really am anywhere. I mean, I'm used to being stared at because I know I look very different. I did get stared at more, I noticed, in Camden this time around. And I, I think the reason for that is that Camden's now full of tourists who go there for the alt culture, to experience the alt culture. It's like a, a novelty to those people. They go there to look at the gothic corsets and to go to Cyberdog and experience the cyber goth and the trad goth styling. I mean, Camden's always been touristy, but now it is just exclusively touristy. And I was actually quite disappointed at that. So Camden's always felt like my home away from home, but this time it really didn't. I felt like I was being stared at, I think, because now I'm the novelty. It seems like people go to Camden to see people like who look like me. And when I'm the only one there who looks like I do, I was just kind of the center of attention and it felt a little bit weird. And I know I'm being a little bit hypocritical here because I too was a tourist that day, right? I'm not from Camden, I don't live in Camden. I live miles and miles and miles away from London. But I, I'm a part of the goth community and I'm a part of the alt community. So Camden should be like that mecca, like it's a pilgrimage, right, for people who a part of these cultures and subcultures. But I didn't feel like that this time. Camden has just changed so much. It's just, it's just full 
of people who are there to experience the novelty of it. And it's not what I expected at all. I mean, I kind of expected like some, some of that because like I say, it's always been a bit touristy, but now it is exclusively just touristy. It, it actually feels like it's a goth, alt, punk, cyber goth, whatever theme park. You're going there because of the theme it, and, and you're going there to, to, to go to the gift shop where it's the only place that you can buy alt, goth, etc. themed paraphernalia. And that makes me really sad because it does feel like the gothic community is shrinking and it does feel like I'm like, I feel more isolated now than I did before I went because I expected to not feel isolated for a change because I always feel that way. I think it, it just sort of amplified that isolation for me visiting Camden. I also noticed that the kind of stuff that was being so like I'm trying not to kind of slag it off too much because I feel like at the heart of Camden the old the true alt and goth community is still very much alive but I feel that there's another side to it which is the side that you see more which is the side that Camden has because it's a niche place with an, like a niche market. I think what it's done is it's attracted a lot of traders who are looking to make some money. They've seen the niche, they've gone and sourced stock that would appeal to the alt community and then they've gone and set up shop in Camden and they themselves are not part of the community and they are not passionate about the community and the culture. That's the part that disappoints me because I went to Camden so that I could immerse myself in the culture that I do my best to immerse myself in, just me, myself and I, and where I live, where there are no goths anywhere near me. <laughs> and I don't have any goth friends, so I feel isolated a lot of the time. So I went to Camden so that I could not feel that way just for a day. So I could meet some people who are like me, who are interested in the culture, part of the culture, part of the community. And I didn't find that. Instead, I found normies selling to goths. It made it harder for me to like buy stuff because I felt like I didn't want to support these people because they were kind of charlatans. They were only there to make money. They're not there because they're part of the culture. The only place I actually felt at home really was in Sai Sai. Check out the, the video here where I visited Sai Sai and I chat a little bit about how amazing the place is and how amazing the staff were. I'm definitely gonna go back there and I said that in the previous video. The women who were in Sai Sai, the staff, were absolutely part of the gothic community and in fact the woman who served us i actually i'm sorry apologies if you're watching i didn't catch your names and apologies for that i'm just calling you the woman and i'm, I'm sorry sorry for that the very nice woman who served us she said you know we have to support each other even now even more than ever and her words have just really stuck in my mind she's absolutely correct we're just so outnumbered and we've always been outnumbered and that's almost the point right that's almost the point of the gothic movement but to see a place like camden just it, i mean i was gonna say dying it's already died i feel like it's already dead now it's just full of tourists the whole thing is a big novelty and the people who are not part of the, of the community who are selling attempting to sell to the community where they're not really they're selling to tourists they're selling cheap tat that's very cliche goth it's not the kind of stuff that that we go there for you know i i wanted to find like wands i wanted to find wiccan stuff i wanted to find lps from like the 80s and 90s from when the movement began i was looking for clothing authentic gothic clothing I, which I did find, to be fair, and I absolutely found in Sai Sai. I feel like Sai Sai actually is the heart of Camden. 
shopping shopping district right I'm, I'm only really talking about the shopping district sai sai is at the heart of it so well done you sai sai because you've stayed true to the movement you've stayed authentic the rest of the place has just fallen to the normies just like everything else i feel really sad saying this but just like a kind of everything else within alt culture I'm just going to umbrella term it, alt culture. Normies have swept in and just destroyed it all, which is what they always do. And I'm not trying to pick on anyone here, but it's everywhere on TikTok in particular. There's lots of people who they're quite young, they're teenagers or in their early 20s maybe, who consider themselves to be goth and consider themselves to be part of the alt community. And... I'm certainly not going to sit here and say, no, you're not, because that's gatekeeping and I'm not into that. However, <laughs> um, they're not true to the movement. They'll just wear the clothes and they'll have the, the sort of witchy woo gothic paraphernalia around their house. But they're not like goth in their heart, right? And anyone watching this who is truly goth, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. I just, I feel really sad that Camden has changed so much. And I mean, if any of you know of a place that is now how Camden was, tell me about it. Please tell me about it because I want to go there because I, I just, I feel sad that after my experience in Camden, I kind of feel like I have nowhere to go where I can be truly authentically me and be fully 100% accepted by the people around me and, you know, won't be stared at because it's not that I look the same as everyone else because the point of being goth is that you look individual, but I don't get stared at for being goth. I'd rather be stared at because I have a cool look, right? I mean, obviously that's not the reason I dress the way that I do, but I hope that makes sense what, what, what I'm saying there. When I get stared at, it's because people are like, whoa, she's a goth. And, you know, you don't see it very often. That's not the reason I want to be stared at. <laughs> like if I'm going to get stared at at all, I'd rather I didn't get stared at at all. But if I am going to be stared at, I'd rather it's by another goth because <laughs> they're like, whoa, your eyeliner looks really awesome. Like, how did you do that? Or how long did it take you to do your makeup? Or your dreads look really cool? Or, or like your dress looks awesome. Where did you get it? You know, I and, and that's the sort of experience that I hoped to have in Camden that I did not have. Instead, I was being stared at. I noticed at one point I got photographed by a very normy looking dude. You know, it's weird, honestly. It's just very weird. You know, I'm not wearing a costume. This is just how I live my life. And being photographed, especially without my permission, is just really odd, really weird behavior. So yeah, Camden wasn't what I thought it was going to be. However, having said that, I did have an awesome shopping trip. I'm not trying to, um, I just realized like this video so far is just me sort of being a, being a bit gloomy and uh, I, I'm not, um, I didn't set out to do that. I suppose really I just wanted to share my very true and authentic experience in Camden and unfortunately wasn't a great one in terms of, you know, the culture and, and such. Having said that, I still had a really fun time. I think I just, I ha I carried an expectation, which is on me, that's my fault. That expectation was based on my previous experience, which admittedly was some time ago. But yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's do the haul, shall we? Let's do the haul. I bought loads of really cool stuff and things, not just in Camden, but throughout my whole trip to London. I did say this in the vlog, but I wanted to share my haul with you at like day by day as you know, the trip went on. But a lot of the stuff that I bought was quite delicate and I didn't want to unpack it because it had to get home in one piece. And there was a lot of traveling through London on trains and I didn't want to unwrap it. And then when I get home, it's broken. I think this is like the first thing that I bought, um, obviously. It's a Union Jack. Um, of course, it's London, right? There's Union Jacks bloody everywhere. This is the first thing um, I bought in Camden. 
and it's a fridge magnet. <laughs> and it's very typically London. There's nothing Camden about this, right? This is all very typically London. See, we've got the Queen's Guard, the iconic red London bus and an authentic bobby. They don't wear hats like that anymore. They don't look like that anymore, but <laughs> um, that is how they used to look in England, not just in London. But yeah, so I, I've started a, um, a fridge magnet collection. So everywhere I go and I have like a, an awesome trip, day trip, holiday, whatever, buy a fridge magnet to like commemorate where I've been and what an amazing time I had. This is the, the London trip fridge magnet. I'm going to kind of hop back and forth here. I'm just going to open stuff as I've got a little pile over here on my desk. I'm just going to work my way through the pile. So this obviously came from Camden Market. So this came from the stall. I'll put a little bit of footage in here. Uh, this came from the stall that I showcased in the vlog. Um, first of all, there's this postcard, which is a it's like a 3D, it looks way cooler in person, honestly, but it it's, it's, it's flat, it's totally flat, but it looks like 3D. I'm obsessed with black cats, so had to happen. And I saw these, it's a little set, little set of three. Anyone who knows me well knows that one of my spirit animals is a robin. Reason being, I was never really into spirit animals. I kind of thought it was nonsense. But when my dad passed away, I was visited repeatedly by robins. Robins wasn't always the same one, I'm sure. But whenever I was sat feeling really low, thinking about my dad, a robin would show up every single time. It became like a running joke almost, like, oh, there's a Robin again. In the end, I relented and I like Googled it and I looked up, what does a Robin represent? And a Robin represents keeping a song in your heart even when something awful is happening to you and kind of keeping your chin up and keeping a smile on your face and doing what you can to find happiness and joy in your moments. As my dad used to say, don't let the bastards get you down. So Robin's even now five years later, Robin, the Robin still shows up significantly for me. If I'm not going through a thing, I won't see a single one. But as soon as I feel a little bit sad and it's like really getting to me, whatever it may be, a Robin will just show up. And it's like a miraculous message from spirit as far as I'm concerned. So amongst all of this goth stuff, amongst all the ravens and the dragons and the black cats and the Ouija boards were these little robins and they are a set and they're doing the hear no evil see no evil speak no evil thing and they're really well made as well they are they're heavy as well they're not they're not plastic they're like made out of stone but yeah they're very so excuse my nails i need to repaint them <laughs> Don't look at, don't look at my nails. <laughs> They're very, very cute. Very sweet little, fat little robins. So the next thing I have is this Wikipedia, which made me smile, spell deck. I got this from Watkins Books in Cecil Court. Watkins Books was established 120 years ago and they have a selection of witchy woo things such as oracle decks, tarot decks, how to witch basically, how to wicker. They also have mala beads and various statues made of various different crystals. Very cool, very cool shop. Really interesting to go and look at all the stuff and things. So yeah, I saw this and it just immediately kind of jumped out. It's basically a collection of spells and the box is really cool as well. And it has this, you can see the the light is so crap in here. Apologies for that, but it, yeah, it's got the moon phases and stars and things on the inside. In the lid, inside the bottom box, there's all these dragonflies and leaves and things. So it's like earth, 
and then the lid is sky so it's like as as above and so below which is pretty cool comes with this nifty guide if you're new to wicca and you you don't know much about the witchy woo it not only shows you how to use the the deck but it also tells you about moon phases when's the best time to cast certain spells on which moon phase how to charge your crystals it talks about different candle colors and their influences what you would have as part of your toolkit for spell casting so how to set up your altar so yeah su super useful very cool um if you're new to this kind of stuff it has all these different spells every single one is a different spell it's split into sections so there's the wiccan sabbats there's pets and nature, spirituality, money and career, family spells, self-care, healing, cleanse and purify, protection and love. Just as a little idea as to what sort of spells there are, there's attract new love, reconnect with someone, shield and protect your home, bless and protect your home, an onyx protection pocket charm, very good stone for protection by the way and grounding breaking a curse house cleansing cleansing your aura there's even a recipe here for chicken garlic soup for when you're not well there's an angel meditation here so yeah very very cool deck really useful i've actually already cast some of the spells and they've worked i mean why wouldn't they right but they worked immediately now this this i'm especially excited for i found this in the it's just called the astrology shop it's in neil street so it's just around the corner from watkins books and i'm going to open this very carefully i also showcased the astrology shop in one of my london vlogs so this is a selenite athame or dagger thank you by the way sky for teaching me how to pronounce athame uh, i remember sitting in a discord call with my friend sky and she and i were just repeating athame 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 over and over to each other until i had the pronunciation correct so thank you <laughs> thank you sky for that i have this uh this this dagger it's made of selenite which is um, commonly known as angel stone and it's excellent for protection. I actually have, you probably can't see it, but behind my lily there, I have a chunk of selenite. I have another chunk just here. I have my selenite here and I have some, I have a selenite wand over there. So, and I have some here as well. So you basically put it in all four corners of your space and it creates a very effective crystal grid of protection for your space and your home. So I have this beautiful dagger, which is going to sit on my altar and, uh, and I'm going to use for various wicker witchy wooness. Super excited about that. Now this here came from, also came from the astrology shop. I have wanted an, uh, a decent sized amethyst geode for a really long time. When I saw this I was, I think my eyes just went, ooh, went all, I went all googly eyed. And so Nero bought this for me. So thank you Nero. I really appreciate it. He said, um, that he got this for my office, so I'm gonna find a home for it somewhere in here. Look at this. Look at that. Wow. It's amethyst, it looks like it's set in slate. Look at that, absolutely beautiful. I love it, thank you Nero, I absolutely love it. I don't know where I'm gonna put it. I'll find, I'll find a home for it for sure. Cyberdog was interesting and fun and epic. I always love going to Cyberdog. They have the most epic clothing in there. Cyberdog is, is just a mix of a lot of my favorite things. Neon black light environment, amazing music that you don't find in night in like typical nightclubs, which is why I've stopped clubbing because the music is just absolute ass. So I kind of went to town a little bit in there. I got this amazing collar. I got this collar as well from Cyberdog, which I'm actually wearing in one of the vlog videos 
And I got my cyber dog cap, which is um, pleather. So it's like vegan, cruelty free leather. But yeah, it's like a trucker cap. Um, and again, I was wearing this on the very last day when I came home. It's amazing. It's super comfy as well. Really love it. I also got this dress from Sai Sai and I got a few other clothing items from Sai Sai as well, which I will show you here. I got this gorgeous punk rave dress. It's velvet and delightfully gothic. This velvet embossed punk rave bodice. It's so soft and super comfortable. And this shirt is by Dark In Love. I love the material, the pattern. It has two-tone buttons and makes a great addition to my wardrobe. So yeah, all in all, a very successful trip. Had an amazing time. Um, oh, I forgot William. forgot about William. <laughs> Hamleys, there we go. Proof, came from Hamleys. Named him William because William Hamley wanted to have the ultimate toy shop in the world and I think he's absolutely achieved that. I felt like it was only right to call my fox William. <laughs> just like the robin, foxes are one of my spirit animals as well so that's why there's just foxes all over the place. There's a fox just down there. <laughs> behind me. <laughs> They're everywhere in the house. I have foxes everywhere. Foxes and robins everywhere. Little little William came home. He lives in the bedroom. So yeah, I had an amazing time. Very successful shopping trip. I hope you enjoyed the haul. Once again, thank you for being here with me. I appreciate you all. I appreciate your beautiful faces and I appreciate your time. If you're not subscribed to the channel, then you know, maybe <laughs> you know, maybe. Why not? It's free. Helps me out. Get to see some content, you know, some cool, cool goth stuff and some gaming stuff. Next time you hang out with one of your friends, maybe just be like, you know what? There's this really cool YouTuber and her name's Alice. You ought to check out her channel. <laughs> Hashtag just saying. I appreciate you and remember that you are important. Please don't think for a moment that you're not. You've got this. You are valuable. You have a lot to offer the world. Remember that. And I will see you in the next one.